Hello and welcome to my KDP beginner's guide for 2022 and beyond. So this is more than likely going to be a, a very, very long video, but I genuinely believe that this will help a lot of people that are starting out with KDP and people that are struggling. So what I wanted to do here was kind of make my ultimate KDP video so that you can proceed with publishing in a way that can benefit you for years to come so that you're never going to have to worry about if you're late to a certain trend or whether KDP is dead or saturated and set you on the same path that I've been following and that's been serving me well for nearly 10 years now. Okay, so certain things have changed over that time, but the core mentality and approach to publishing, uh, it's never gonna die, it's never gonna change if you get certain things right, okay? So this isn't gonna be your typical beginner's guide where I'm gonna show you how to create an account, how to upload lots and lots of books or where to buy interiors and make ridiculous promises and guarantees of income. What I want this to be is a real guide based purely on my experience with publishing over the span of the last 10 years now, possibly more than 10 years at this point. And I want to use that experience to set you on a path that can actually increase your chances of being successful with publishing, okay? So I don't claim to be an expert by any stretch of the imagination, but publishing has allowed me to become more financially stable and I'd love to share my approach with you. And I would love for you to get these aspects of publishing mastered first before you start worrying about things like keywords and titles and subtitles and back-end keywords and things like that. So what we actually want to do, what we want to master first is the art of being actually able to sell something to someone, okay? Because all the, the keywords and niches under the sun aren't going to make you money unless you know how to sell something, okay? So that's what I want to do in this video. So if you like the idea of a completely transparent and realistic approach to publishing and earning money online, I'd love for you to subscribe to my channel. You'll have to put up with some clickbaity videos from time to time, but I promise to never lead you down a dead end path or preach something that I don't actively practice, okay? So that's enough rambling. Let's take a look at the topics that are gonna be discussed in this video. Now, what I wanted to do was to break this down into a few different sections, okay? So the first section that I'm gonna be talking about is expectations and publishing reality, okay? So within this section, I'm gonna be talking about is KDP saturated and worth your time? Can I earn a full-time income with KDP? Skewed expectations, how long will it take? How many books will sell? And starting with no money versus starting with money. So the next section is going to be about the different types of books that you can publish and the chances of making sales with those type of books, okay? So we're obviously gonna be talking about low content books, medium content books, higher content books, eBooks, and then taking a look at which I think is the best. Moving on from that, we're gonna be talking about the type of books that I actively sell. So these are one of a kind or unique low content books, activity books, coloring books, short stories, picture books, and cookbooks okay so moving on for there we're gonna be taking a look at what the best way to waste your time with KDP is okay so in this section we're gonna be looking at things like generic low content books following niche videos publishing where you don't have any clue or experience buying pre-made interiors from there we're gonna move on to talk about niche research okay so in that section we're gonna look at how important niches actually are how I find my niches for free, how I decide if I can compete in that niche, and then I'm gonna take a look at niche confirmation factors, okay? So that's a big one. Next section is about creating your listing, okay? So again, I'm not gonna be going into how to create your title and subtitle, back-end keywords, making your description, things like that, because there's a million different videos on that, and it takes away, in my opinion, from what actually matters, and that's focusing on the order of importance, okay? So that's the only section I'm gonna be looking at inside that section there, is the order of importance. So the next section here is the big, big section in this video, which is making your book sell, okay? So we're gonna be taking a look at things like adding value to your book, your listing aesthetic, running ads, your A plus content, how you can stand out with your low content books, taking a look at the type of books where you don't need to add value, where you don't need to be better than your competition. We're gonna look at things like getting reviews, and then we'll take a look at the importance of making each book better than the last one you've created. Okay, so moving on from there, we're gonna be taking a look at the importance of your book cover, okay? Again, this is gonna be a massive, massive one. So in this section, we'll take a look at understanding your customer standards. Then from there, we're gonna take a look at being in theme, 
with your niche, which again is a big one and something I talk about a lot on this channel. And then from there, I'm gonna take a look at whether you should design the cover yourself or outsource it and help you decide which one you should go for. Next section is gonna be the software which I recommend that you use. So that's gonna be Creative Fabrica, Activity Book Software, Helium 10, DS Amazon Quick View, uh, listing expander and then of course you have your brain slash common sense so if i've used a software before in videos that you see me promoting and you don't see it in this list it's because i don't use it anymore so these are the ones i'm actively using or going to be using as i'm going forward and then the next section we're going to have is running ads to your book okay so i have a free ads course which is going to be uh, the, the plug here for that section but we'll also talk briefly about the benefits of running ads and whether you should run ads to your books or not Okay, so like I say, this is gonna be a long video and I will try and put timestamps in so that you can refer back to the section that you're interested in. But what I recommend that you do is to watch the entirety of this video over the course of a few days or a few weeks because ultimately in this video is absolutely everything that I believe, everything, the way that I approach publishing myself and I have been approaching publishing for a long, long time. So what I want to happen after all said and done is for you to be on par with me, okay? So we're gonna go ahead and move on to the first section, which is expectations and reality with publishing. So the first section within this section is, is KDP saturated and worth your time? So this is something you've probably seen 100 videos on. Everyone makes one of these videos every single month, pretty much. And you know, the answer to this, in my opinion, especially if you take the approach in this video and the approach that I take toward publishing is that it doesn't matter, you can just, flip a coin if you want to and whatever the outcome you go forward you proceed with this mentality you proceed with publishing you proceed with your business because it doesn't matter okay the way that we're going to do things it will never matter if kdp is saturated or not okay and also who determines what saturated is at what point is something officially saturated okay so do yourself a big favor here in terms of a mental block and just get rid of this question completely out of your head stop watching videos on this question just go forward with publishing because it's always going to be huge. Amazon has too many customers. It has too much power for you to ever have to worry about whether you can actually make money because you definitely can. The thing with the whole saturation thing is that it comes from low content books. So what happens here is that people have been under the impression that a couple of years ago you could upload anything to Amazon, you'd start making money. But those people, they come in and they start publishing low content books, really low quality, low content books and they don't make any sales and then they blame it on saturation and the more this happens the more you hear about is kdp saturated the more videos you see about kdp saturated the more people you see and hear saying that kdp is saturated completely okay so realistically there's never really been a time where bad books have been selling well okay customers don't want bad books okay so kdp you know the low content book scene i guess to some extent is more competitive than ever because of all the YouTube channels and all and how easy it is to get into. And there would certainly be a case to say that some books do get lost. Some good books do get lost on Amazon because there's just so much content, so many books being uploaded onto Amazon that there is a chance that your book in certain niches will get lost. But if you watch this video, I'm gonna show you, show you ways that you can stand out above all these terrible books quite easily and continue to make sales for a long, long time. Okay, so the next section here in this first section is can I earn a full-time income with KDP? The answer is yes, you definitely can. But what I would suggest is that anyone that wants to earn money online is to not put their eggs, all their eggs into one basket because it's a very dangerous pursuit. Um, you probably heard lots of stories about people getting their accounts terminated from Amazon. And, you know, it's, it's very realistic. There have been points in my life where I've had warnings from Amazon years and years ago albeit they were very very harsh and very vague but the reality is that you know this income that you've built up it can all be taken away from you very very quickly and there's no guarantee that you will get your account back okay so the answer is yes you can earn a full-time income from kdp but if you're going to be pursuing this in terms of you know quitting your job and things like that then you definitely definitely want other things going on for you as well online so for me for example i use kdp to build up my income start a youtube channel um, to fund other projects like at the moment I'm doing an, an FBA thing so physical products through 
uh, Amazon as well. And, you know, just make sure that you have multiple streams of income. But KDP is definitely the one you can get started with. It's the easiest. Um, it's the most accessible. And yeah, you can definitely make some very, very good money from KDP. Okay, so next section here is how long will it take to make money and make sales with KDP? So how does anyone answer this? Because, you know, you could make money within the first two days by having one sale from your first book. You could not make anything from your first hundred books after uploading for a year. But the reality here is if you're publishing in a certain way that I'm gonna show you in this video, you would be looking at spending at least three to four months before you see your first sale through Amazon KDP, okay? So this is where you have to be realistic, okay? You need to treat this as a business and you need to not get demoralized if you're not making sales straight away, okay? So yes, you can see sales almost straight away with your first book, but it's pretty unlikely. So it depends what type of book you're uploading, your current understanding, of Amazon and the type of standards that your customer expects, whether you're on board with that. So many different factors and it's something you can't really give an answer to. But what I will say, you know, fundamentally that this is a business that needs to be grown and takes time. You need to learn over time and get better and better and better. So again, it's one of those questions that you don't need to concern yourself with particularly, but at the same time, you do need to be realistic and do need to understand that this is a business and you will need to work at it for months and months and months. Okay, so if I had to give a time to potentially make part-time income, it would be at least six months to a year. And then from there, that you know, it, the, the income that you make after that depends on how well you are, how good you are at scaling your business, okay? Okay, so the next section here is how many of my books will sell? Again, it's a question that you shouldn't really concern yourself with because of too many different factors that need to be taken into consideration here. From my experience, around 20% of my books make sales, okay? But again, it depends on the type of book that you upload. If you're uploading low quality, low content books like I've done, I uploaded maybe 200 of these in the space of four months and only a couple of them actually made sales. So it depends on the type of book they're uploading. If you take a look at my coloring books and activity books, for example, around 50% of them make sales to some extent and around 20% of them make pretty good money consistently and have stuck in the marketplace, okay? So again, it's one of those things, don't really concern yourself with that question, but just know that the chances of you making sales with every single book that you upload is gonna be pretty slim, especially if you're just starting out. Okay, so can you get started with no money and is it better to start with money? Should go without saying that you're gonna have quicker results and higher quality results if you have money to start with. However, I know a lot of people don't have much money to start with. So that's obviously dependent on a few different factors. But of course, you can start with no money, but it's gonna be hard. I started my paperback journey with no money whatsoever. It took me three months to write my first book, and then it took another two months to see any sales happen from that. But it did go on to be one of my best-selling books. But it's one of those things you need to be realistic. Like if you have seen videos where people are creating notebooks and creating journals for free in Canva and they're taking their interiors from wherever or they're making their interiors themselves for a very, very, very low price. Yes, these are easy to create and yes, you can do this with little to no money, but the chances of making sales from just doing these type of generic low content books is very, very slim and you will have to keep producing lots and lots and lots of them, okay? So what I'm gonna be doing in a, a section later on in this video is showing you how you can make your low content books stand out and increase your chances of making sales with those books. But if you have money to start, then you're gonna have a, a, you know, a much better head start than someone that doesn't have money. That should go without saying, okay? Because you can outsource things where your strengths don't lie. So for example, I can't design things very well and I don't want to learn how to design things. So I've got the money to outsource my interiors and my covers Okay, and the last section here that I wanted to talk about very quickly was unrealistic expectations. So this is mainly caused by YouTube videos and other people's income reports and things like this, okay? So the people that are making great money with low content books and they're happy to show that off to you, I mean, that's, that's whatever. It doesn't bother me particularly, but these aren't normal. They're not typical results that you can see. So someone that's making like eight, nine, 10, $15,000 a month with low content book publishing. This is not realistic, okay? This is not normal. It's not a normal amount. I don't make that type of money myself with publishing, okay? It didn't even come close when I was just doing low content and no content books, okay? So with these type of things that you see with income reports and um, uh, 
uh, you know, the, the niche videos that claim you can make X amount of money per month in certain niches, you got to take them with a pinch of salt, okay? Because ultimately you're going to be on your own journey and you're never going to know what someone else is doing. Someone that's making 15000 10000 5000 even 2000 or or $1,000 a month, you're never going to see what they're doing. You don't really know how long it's taken them to get there either. You can't see the exact book, their exact approach. So when it comes to watching videos like that, you need to be realistic and it's going to be about what you can manage to do yourself because the chances of you being able to make 10 grand a month through publishing very quickly is incredibly unlikely. And I would go as far as say that most people watching this video will never make that type of money from publishing. But to keep you motivated, it is definitely not unachievable to make a full-time income or at least a part-time income within a year of publishing. And, th and then from there, who knows what you can achieve. But early days, the first year, at least you need to be realistic with what type of income you, you can expect to make. Okay, so that's the first section out of the way here, which is expectations and publishing reality. Now, the takeaway from this section is that you need to get the hype out of your head, okay? So I know it's exciting to start a new business. I know it's exciting at the thought of making a passive income, but the hype needs to be taken away from it completely if you're gonna have success with this because a lot of things that you see online, a lot of people's income reports, they are very specific to that person. They are not normal and they've taken a long, long time for that person to make that type of money. So if you're just starting off or you've, if you've only been in this for a few months and you're not making the sales that you want to see, you should not feel demoralized, okay? Like I get people messaging me saying they've not made sales after a month of publishing and it's like, well, this is a business. Is it gonna take you six months? It's gonna take you a year, maybe longer than that to get going with this. So yeah, this is the point of this section, be realistic. Don't act entitled just because you've uploaded a book onto Amazon. Like I keep saying, a child could do this. There's no reason to expect Amazon to owe you something just because you've uploaded a low content book onto their platform, okay? Okay, so the second section here is the type of books that you can publish and the chances of making sales with those books. So the first and the most popular type of book and the, probably the reason why you're scrolling through YouTube looking at these type of videos is low content books. Now, in my opinion, the chances of making sales and by sales i mean regular sales with low content books i think it's very very low and if you do it the worst way possible which is the way that probably 90 plus percent of people are doing it i would say the chances of you making regular sales are pretty low close to no chance whatsoever however later on in this video what i'm going to be doing is showing you the ways that i've managed to make my low content books stand out and increase the chances of making sales to the point where they actually become regular so if you do have a low budget then, then low content books are absolutely fine for you to get started and i will show you later on in this video like i say a way that i have been um, making sure that my low content books stand out so if you're interested in that, make sure that you keep watching this video. But for now, let's move on to the second type of book, which is medium content books. So I don't know if this is a phrase that I've coined or everyone, everyone's actually used this phrase before, medium content. Um, I've kind of just been calling it that to make sure that it stands apart from your typical low content books, just because I think it's such a better pursuit. OK, so the chance I think of making sales with certain types of medium content books are much higher. I would say they are. Uh, medium to high if I had to if I had to put a category on it. So for this category medium content books I'm talking about things like activity books and coloring books mostly and then we have your higher or high content books and I think the chances of selling these is the highest out of low content medium content and high content books. I think you have the most chance of making uh, making sales with these type of books but the reality here is that when it comes to like a full-blown high content book so looking at things like uh, possibly cookbooks or self-help guides or things like that. It's probably going to take you a lot of time to do this. It's going to take you a lot of time to learn about the niche that you're entering or it's going to cost you a fair bit of money to have someone who does know what they're talking about create this book for you. So for most of us, a lot of us won't be creating higher content books, but because they're so hard to create and they cost so much money to create, that means that the competition is naturally going to be much less than low content and medium content books. And that's why I think this type of book is the one that is the most likely that you'll see sales in. And then we have eBooks. Now, if you're producing low content books or even medium content books, then you're probably not going to concern yourself with eBooks, to be honest, because for the most part, these, these type of books, they don't 
it doesn't make sense to create an ebook version of them. However, when it comes to your higher content books, if you are creating them, then it is absolutely fantastic. It is a great idea to make sure that you have an ebook version of your book as well, because it's almost like a separate listing, even though it's on the same listing. Um, people can find your ebook separately to your paperback book. So if someone was to find your ebook, your ebook listing, as opposed to your paperback, then they might go on to the listing and go ahead and buy the paperback or the hardback version instead or vice versa, okay? So that's why ebooks are so great, even if they don't give you that much profit directly from an ebook sale. But again, most people watching this aren't gonna be interested in ebooks because it will be for those higher content books that take a lot of time and a lot of money to produce. Okay, so which do I think is the best type of book to sell? Now this obviously depends on you and your budget. So if you have no budget whatsoever, then you pretty much have to create low content books, okay? So naturally that's gonna be the one for you to go to if your budget is quite low. Again, stick around uh, throughout this video because I'm gonna show you the way to actually increase your chances of making sales with low content books. But the one that I think is the best for me, the one that sort of hits that middle ground is obviously that medium content book niche. So things like activity books and coloring books are where I've had the most success uh, the last sort of six months because these are the type of books like coloring books and activity books. People always seem to want them and you can always niche down. You can even make up your own niches with these type of books. And what I find so great is that you, for medium content books like, like coloring books, you don't necessarily have to be the absolute best. You don't necessarily have to offer more than what your competition is offering because once someone buys one of those books, like they buy a coloring book from the best book on the first page of Amazon, they're not going to go back and buy that book again just to repeat that. They're going to go on and buy someone else's book and that book could be yours. So that's why I love medium content books is because you don't have to be the best and there are just tons and tons and tons of different niches that you can target in terms of different um, age groups, for example, and genders and, and the competition will be less than low content books as well. However, one of the best things that I've done for my publishing business, and I've spoken about this many times in my videos, and I've, I've spoken to a lot of people and told them to do this, the, the same approach to publishing, is to, is to enter a variety of niches. If you can, if you have the money to do this, give it a go. Give low content books a go, give medium content books a go, and give higher content books a go. So for me, like I have one bigger high content uh, book in the works pretty much all time something that I'm outsourcing that cost me quite a lot of money like two to three hundred pounds uh, maybe uh, what's that like four hundred dollars and then I'm also outsourcing some of my medium content stuff I'm uh, for much much cheaper like picture uh, you know uh, illustrations for example which are much cheaper to have made um, using certain software to help me create these activity books and cutting books uh, in the medium content niches and then low content books I've not you know I've not produced any of these for a fair while but I was doing these myself. I was using Canva to create these books, uh, the covers for these books. And I was just outsourcing the interiors for like, you know, a, a dollar per interior, obviously, because they're just low content books. Um, but I, you know, like I said, I was doing that in a very specific way, which I'm going to show you in this video. But the best thing that I think you can do is just go for all of it, because eventually you'll find something that you're good at doing. And for me, it's it's mainly been these medium content books where I've had the most success. And I would never have thought that unless I had tried it. If I just stuck at the low content books, generic low content books, and just gone on and on and on to have thousands and thousands of books in my account that was making me like $50 a month or something, then I would have wasted a ton of life. I would never have known that like activity books and coloring books were a much better pursuit. I would never have known that my higher content books that I wrote myself would go on to, to sell pretty well for like three years, pretty much. But honestly, like I say, if you have the money, if you have the time to do this, I would definitely make sure that you spread yourself out across as many different niches and types of book as you can. And the thing is with that is once you find what you're good at, once you, once you manage to crack one section, is then, like everyone says, is to double down. So for me, I found that the coloring book that I released uh, six or seven months ago was doing pretty well for me. It, it got some traction straight away. And I was like, you know what, this is a good niche. I've got someone that's good at designing these type of things. I can actually make some of these covers myself. And, you know, it wasn't costing me too much money at the time. So I was like, you know what, let's just do it. Let's do some more of these. Let's do five more of these. Let's get them outsourced. Let's get them on to Amazon. And it worked out pretty well. So again, variety. Okay, so let's move on to the next section here, which is what type of books am I actively selling? So the reason that I wanted to 
create this section was so that you can see the type of books that I actively pursue, okay? So these, these books aren't every single type of book that I've had made. These are just the ones that I think have the most potential and the ones that I've had the most success with with the last few months, okay? So what I would love to do for this section is to just show off all of my books. And this is something I've tried doing before with other books where I've showed exactly what I've done, uh, shown the listing, but lo and behold, people just copy it like crazy and it is just not worth doing. But what I can do is to talk about the type of books that I have produced and to show you how I'm having them made, okay? So, so the first type of book that I think has a lot of potential are activity books. Now again, this is obviously very vague, but with activity books, just like coloring books, you have so much potential to sell to all, all types of different uh, customers. So you have kids, you have adults, you have different genders, you have different age ranges, you have different occasions. And of course, these type of books sell like crazy during Christmas as well. And you can even target like Valentine's Day activity books and things like that, okay? So with creating these activity books, this is something that I can't do myself. And it's also something that I can't uh, you know, fully outsource. Like some of the pages I do need to outsource, like the pages that are, coloring in pages, but for things like word searches and mazes, etc., etc., I tend to use software. So this isn't gonna be a plug for any type of software, but what I actively use is the hand-drawn maze software to create, uh, as you can see on screen here, uh, to create these type of hand-drawn style mazes. You've probably seen me promote this software before, but I think it is very good, and I think you can create something that an outsourcer probably won't be able to create, and especially in the way that the hand-drawn maze software works there's a ton of features and lots of features being added to this software all the time so that's why i use it i think it's great and also if you decide to pick up this software through me from the description below you'll also get my case study so i, sp I spoke about not being able to show off the exact type of books that i'm having made or the books that i have uploaded what the case study does and what it's there for is to show you the exact type of book that i am having made the way that i have it made uh, the way that I have the cover created and the way that I decide if I want to enter the niche or not, how I create the title, the subtitle, description, A plus content, how I run ads to it, pretty much everything is included in that case study, okay? So if you're interested in the hand-drawn maze software and you wanna get that, you'll also get that case study with it as well, which is gonna clear a lot of things up for you, I promise, in terms of what actually works when it comes to selling, thing, uh, selling books online, okay? So aside from this software, I also use the uh, the word search software that the same guys that made this use. I'm going to link it all in the description if you want to, to check that out. And also coloring pages is a big one for me as well. And any other type of activity that I don't think a software can produce particularly well, I will have outsourced through Upwork. OK, so we might have an extra section about outsourcing at the end of this um, at the end of this video so that you can see how to outsource effectively without getting ripped off basically, and also to get good prices for the images that you have made. But that's the first one that I go for. I really like is activity books. I highly suggest that you take a look at these activity books. So I know this is all sounded a little bit vague at the moment and you wanna hear about niches and things like that, blah, blah, blah. But there's gonna be a section in this video if you keep watching it, it's gonna be called, um, if you remember, it's the one about the niche research. So in that section, I'm gonna show you uh, how to find niches that you can compete with and how you decide if you can compete in them as well, okay? So it's a huge section and it's gonna bring everything together. So all these activity books and coloring books and things like that. If you're a little bit confused as to whether you can compete or not, or how to niche down or how to find out if you fit into the marketplace and things like that, just wait for that section. But at the moment, this section is all about the type of books that I have made and what type of, and how I'm having them made effectively, okay? Okay, so the next type of book that I that I love and have the most success with over the last six months has been coloring books. So I think I have around 12 coloring books that I've made in the last six months. Around 50, I think around 50% of them sell to some extent and around 20% have stuck around to make some pretty good money pretty much every single day, okay? So you've probably seen coloring book niches on YouTube and people talking about how coloring books are saturated and things like that. Um, but I love it. Like I, I've been producing these books recently and having sales with them and I have them outsourced entirely. Um, even the covers now for coloring books, I have them outsourced from Upwork here. So as you can see, this is Upwork. Um, this is where I outsource pretty much everything. I, I sometimes use Fiverr for the, for book covers, but Upwork is the one where I have uh, the most success in terms of having interiors made. As you can see, I'm looking for someone to 
to edit my YouTube channel. If you're if you're a video editor with some sick skills and you want to have some work, then yeah, drop me a message. But I I primarily use Upwork just to find illustrations. Okay, so if you're going to be doing coloring books, then I really, really don't recommend doing what a lot of people do, and that is to go to places like Creative Fabrica and take existing images and just use them as they are in your coloring books. There's something that just doesn't feel right about that to me. I know a lot of people do it. I know a lot of people say, oh, if you just change a few things here and there, it'll be fine. Again, it doesn't feel, it, it feels lazy and it produces lazy results typically is what I've seen other people doing. So I like to have one person that knows what they're doing that can create a really unique and sick interior and, and then also have the cover made from somewhere like Fiverr. But again, cover, super important. Gonna talk about that later on in a different video, but this is coloring books. This is a great um, market, market to enter because again, so much potential. You can target all age ranges. You can target men, women, kids, teenagers, different um, occasions, Christmas, Valentine's, etc., etc. There's just so, so much potential as well, okay? Okay, so the next type of book that I had success with was selling short stories. So I wrote my first ever short story, I think around, uh, I can't, it must have been over a year ago, but that book still sells. And then after I saw that that was having some success with the niche that I was in for kids, um, I went ahead and outsourced these to someone else who could actually write better short stories than me. And I went on to have about three more of them made, which do, they do well. They don't do as well as the coloring books or the activity books, but they're still pretty good. And again, you don't have to pay someone that much. And if you can do this yourself, if you, if you like writing kids books, for example, kids stories, do it, you know, put it out there. That means you can do it for free. Then go ahead and spend what money you have on this project on a, an insane book cover. Okay. So that's short stories. The other one that I did myself was picture books. So I actually went out, took pictures of certain things. Um, uh, it's obviously after I found the niche that I was interested in selling and took the pictures, made books out of it. They sold quite well. Um, again, very specific audience. And it was actually a niche that was kind of, dare I say, untapped. So naturally it did quite well without having to be like the best or have, without having to add value. And that's the thing, if you find a niche that doesn't have much competition, you, you know, go for it. You don't have to listen to me telling you that you need to differentiate your book or add extra value. You can just go ahead and create a good book and make money in an unsaturated niche, basically. So that was picture books. And then the other type of book that I had made was, I, I'm hesitant to say cookbooks um, because they kind of weren't, it was something that I had quite a bit of knowledge in myself and I actually wrote these books myself. Um, and they do quite well, ranked uh, 4.5, uh, rated 4.5 stars. But I wrote these myself and this isn't like cookbooks now is a marketplace that is chock-a-block full of people that are just outsourcing um, and copying recipes off the internet. So I don't necessarily recommend this unless you have something unique to offer where you can stand out. But that's just one of the ones that I had quite a lot of uh, continuous success with, okay? Okay, so the last type of book and the one that you're probably gonna be interested in is the low content book, okay? So I had quite a lot of low content books made and a lot of them don't sell. And the only way that they started selling for me was when I started doing something unique. So what I want to do in this section now is to talk about how you can make your low content books unique. Now this is incredibly important. I really, please listen to this section because it's gonna save you a lot of time uh, and a lot of headaches when it comes to publishing books on Amazon. Okay, so in this section, I'm gonna talk about low content books and the problem with low content books, and this is just my opinion, obviously, but also how you can avoid the big, big problems with low content books and actually stand out and make increase your chance increase your chance of your book making sales okay so what i think the problem with low content books is that they're so easy to make and i think a lot of channels this is not a dig at anyone else's channel whatsoever there's a lot of channels that show you how to create low content books using things like canva or um, whatever you know programs people use to create their books these days and when people are doing demonstrations they'll show you things like how to create a unicorn notebook or something like something really generic and if you pair that something so easy that everyone has done and can do if you pair that with doing really generic niche research like this is the problem in my opinion generic books with, with simplistic niche research okay so you come to amazon you see 
um, something like Unicorn Notebooks, you look through, you look at the BSRs, you see that they're performing quite well. You're like, oh, you know, rank 6,000. That seems incredible. I'll go ahead and create my own Unicorn Journal and Sketchbook. But the reality is you're just seeing what someone else has done that's worked for them that they've you, you don't know what factors it could be an issue of date 2019 for example here was when this book was uploaded they might have been the first person to have done a unicorn and sketchbook notebook in this way they might have some sort of backing they might be running ads to it and spending a lot of money so when you pair these two factors together where it's being shown as such an easy way to create a book which it is it's so easy to create these type of generic books i think even i could create some of these covers and interiors like this one here for example Everyone that sends me their, their books to take a look at and kind of review and give feedback on, everyone has these kind of composition notebooks with just these little patterns on the front, okay? It's been done. Like it, Amazon is just flooded. And if you create a book like this, if you create a composition notebook, for example, with a unicorn on the front, do you, do you really, do you think you're gonna get found on the front page? Something that that is, that is so easy to create, something that a dog, could come onto Canva and create this book in a few minutes. Don't you think that a lot of people have already done that? And if so, which they have, where do you think your book is gonna rank on Amazon if you upload it? So I can promise you that you won't be on the front page or anywhere near the front page. And that's the problem with low content books is that you're just never gonna get found. And the niches are too generic. And the examples that people give off, I don't think help at all it gives the impression that you can just upload books like this and make sales when i really don't think you can okay so that's the first problem is those two uh, factors paired together generic low content books and misleading re uh, niche research okay and like i say it's so sad to see because a lot of people send me their books like i say to take a look at to give feedback on not that my feedback is the be all and end all feedback but these people People aren't making sales for a reason. And so many people, almost every single person that I've spoken to is making these kind of books. And it's, it's a case of why are people making these books and expecting to make sales? Because a lot of people are getting so disheartened creating sketchbooks and, and notebooks and unicorn books. They're getting so disheartened at not making any sales. And this has come from something. And I honestly think it is from the, the low content KDP YouTube scene, um, Facebook groups, and all sorts of things pushing that this is a an easy way to make money, and it's it's not. It's an easy way to create books. You can do a unicorn composition notebook if you want to get some experience creating a book. It's not going to make you sales unless you create something that's insane and run ads to it. Okay, so moving on from that, I've ranted about this enough, but let's talk about how you can actually stand out with low content books. Okay, so this is what I've done in the past. It's not what I do anymore because I'm focusing on those those medium content books that I love so much. But if you're starting off and you want to do low content books and you want to make it worth your time, because honestly, people have thousands and thousands and thousands of these books and they're making like $20 a month. Your time is much more valuable than this, I promise you. And with a few tweaks and changes to your mentality and your approach to low content books, you can make more money. Okay, I promise you. Just listen to this section of the video and I'm going to show you what I would do and what I recommend, okay? So first and foremost, drop the idea of creating notebooks and journals with just like these generic pictures on the front, okay? Just because this book is ranked 13,000 does not mean you will come anywhere near this type of success with one book, okay? That would be the dream. I'd love to do this. I'd love to create a, a line journal with a, a picture that I can take off Canva and shove it on the front and make bank from it. But you can't, like that's the reality, okay? So the way that I would approach this, and again, this is not a guarantee for making sales, but I will guarantee it will increase your chance of making sales, is to make your book as unique as possible, is to go beyond what people are creating on Amazon. So if you see something like a, a unicorn coloring book, or a, sorry, not a unicorn coloring book, a unicorn sketchbook, or unicorn notebook, it's been done. So what can you do to stand out in this market that is a completely flooded with the exact same type of book. So the mentality that you, that I think you should go into this is that you want to be the first of your kind in whatever niche, if you're doing low content books especially, whatever niche you're going after, whatever book you're going after, be as unique as possible, okay? Make your interior unique, make your front cover as unique as possible. And by unique, I don't mean use a different type of unicorn or a different type of cover. 
I mean, go out there, go really out there and try and produce something that no one's ever seen before. So let me give an example of what I would do. Everyone knows about these password logbooks. Yes, they're stupid, but people do want them like, yeah, whatever. People are actively buying these. If you're interested in creating a password logbook, for example, as your low content book pursuit, then don't do what everyone else is doing. Look at these here. Actually, let me try and find an independently published. Look at this here. 2019 it's ranked pretty well it's been making it's got thousands and thousands of reviews making consistent sales every day it's just a password logbook uh with uh, with a, a floral design on it and the same as this one here like it's oh that's got a, a publisher backing ignore that one so this one for example it's got uh you know it's got sales going to it don't come and copy this person's work this is the easiest thing to do it's the laziest thing to do and it's the most unproductive thing to do is to copy what someone else is doing. So if I was making a password book, for example, I would take elements that are working for other people. Now, don't mistake this. I know some people have been confused by this when I say this, is to take inspiration from other people's book, take design elements, take fonts, for example, and, and themes that are working for other people and implement them into your book. So let me give you an example here whilst trying to be as unique as possible still. So if we were scrolling through here, what we can see for password logbooks is that the floral thing sells uh, this kind of, uh, I don't know what you would call it, like a sort of handwritey um, type of font on the, on the front here. That type of thing sells. And if, you, and if you keep going through and just take a look at the different design elements that are working for other people, you can then create your own 100% unique design based around these factors. Okay, so... This one here has the swear word in it. Again, you won't be able to run ads to this book if you have a swear word in it, but it's a good idea. It's unique. It's something different. Um, so we've got the floral thing. We've got the, the type of the handwritten type of font. We have the swear word, for example. And then if we keep scrolling through, we can see things like here, like not a password book. So uh, sign in successful. Again, I don't, I'm not sure if I've seen anyone doing this before. The design isn't great, but it's something different. They've, they've you know, they're not just put password logbook on the front of their book and what you can do after you've done this is to take all of this and then create something unique yourself okay so for me if I thought that the following factors were working in this niche so we have the floral thing we have the handwriting thing we have the the swear word which sells well and then we have the sort of unique saying on the front okay but it's still relevant to the niche like this one here for example not a password book sign in successful okay so it's relevant to the niche is it funny? Maybe, I don't know, but whatever. You could then try and create something completely unique around those factors, okay? I'm going around in circles here, but I think you know what I'm getting at. Okay, so from there, once you've established the things that are selling well for other people, you can go ahead and create something completely unique based off of that, okay? So we're not copying, but we're taking inspiration and then creating our own ideas. Like I've done here in what is possibly the world's worst book cover. I don't need anyone to tell me that really sucks i know but you see what i'm doing here you could you got the floral thing you got the black and white you got the um the swear word in there as well and you got the unique saying on the front so uh one book for all your passwords what a dumb effing idea okay so you could also play off the the fact that it is pretty stupid to have a whole uh book dedicated to a uh, one book dedicated to all of your passwords um so again someone might find that funny as a gift for example and at the same time it's completely unique to anything else that you see on Amazon okay so that's that's the way that you can stand out with your low content books is by going into a, this mentality that you must be different in every way possible that you can while still trying to take some of those elements from books that are selling well okay okay so let me move on to a big suggestion for creating your low content books and as you can see a, a man of my skill I, I cannot create anything that looks particularly good and when it comes to you know simple low content books like this that you're going to create yourself if you're going to go this route of low content books and you're going to do it for a low 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 price um, then let me suggest that you do turn your attention to creative fabrica so i've spoken kind of against the idea of taking images and stuff from creative fabrica but what i want to do is to show you what i think you can do i'm going to make a separate video on this at some point but what you can do with creative fabrica if i just come across and show you now is to to use their font section to make your book stand out okay so when it comes to your low content books your font is going to be for me i found it is like 80 percent of the book cover okay it is absolutely massive and it is important that you get your fonts right because honestly the ones in canva um they don't look particularly good in my opinion they're okay that you can find some decent ones but the ones on creative fabrica are 
uh, you know, there's no doubt they are much, much better. And they have a library of fonts that is, I think it's like 9,000 pages or something stupid. Um, there, there's just a lot of them. This is just a colorful font section. Um, yeah, 90,000 search results here on, on Creative Fabrica. And you can target whatever type of niche that you're going for. And honestly, there's just so much here that it will make a huge difference to the aesthetic of your book cover. I absolutely promise you. And your book covers are so important. If you're going to go this free route or very, very cheap route, I would highly recommend that you you get um, a subscription to Creative Fabrica. I think the first month is a dollar followed by, I don't know, $19, $16. I can't remember what it is. It's something quite low. But if you're going to invest into something for your low content books, 100% make it um, Creative Fabrica, use these fonts when you create your book covers, it's gonna make a huge difference in terms of standing out, being different and actually creating a unique design that doesn't look <laughs> as bad as this. Okay, so imagine this design with some of the, the elements used from Creative Fabrica, it would look pretty good. And again, it's all about increasing your chances of making sales, which I promise you that would definitely do. Okay, so moving on to the next section, we're gonna be talking about the best ways to waste your time with KDP. And I wanted to include this section because while it's good to, to tell you what I think is a profitable path when it comes to publishing, I think it's equally as important to know what pointless pursuits are. And like I say, this is just my opinion, but it is based purely off of lots of experience and talking to people who have had similar experiences with these type of pursuits as well, okay? So the first one we've already spoken about, which is generic low content books. So things that aren't niche down, books that aren't niche down, books that don't give any value, books that don't offer anything different into the marketplace. This is a waste of time in my opinion. It's the biggest waste of time. And I think it is something that a huge percentage of people that are trying to pursue low content books are doing. They're not doing anything different with their books. And you gotta think of it this way, if you come up with an idea to put a, a cactus onto a notebook or a, a unicorn onto a sketchbook, how easy was that to do? And how many people do you think have already done that? The answer is thousands and thousands of people who have already done these types of books. And if you try and compete with those books just because you see them selling well on the first page, I promise you that you are gonna turn up on page 50 or something like that and customers are never gonna see your books, okay? So that's generic low content books. We already looked at in the last section how you can make your low content books stand out. And then in the section going forward, we're gonna take a look at some other factors when it comes to selecting your niches, okay? But if you just find, if you just go onto Amazon, you're just looking at these sort of niche lists and, and niche videos and you see that, um, I don't know, meditation journals are selling well or something like that, you're not gonna be able to compete. The chances of you making sales with a generic book like that are pretty slim. Okay, so the next big time waster, and this might be a slightly controversial one, is following niche videos. Now, I know that I used to release niche videos and I used to think that these were actually helping people. And a couple of them were niches that I published in myself, but it's such, in my opinion, it is such a lazy pursuit to go to YouTube to try and find niches because Finding niches, and again, just my opinion, don't be upset by it, but finding niches is the easiest thing on the planet, okay? So you can go onto Amazon. I'm gonna show you in the section coming up in a minute how I do my free niche research. You don't need to use paid software like Helium 10. That can help you with finding those kind of really hidden niches, but still, you don't need it to find niches. If you get into the habit of searching for niches, then eventually you will come across ones that are low in competition naturally just because you've gotten better at finding niches yourself and trust me it's not hard i just don't think you should rely on youtube videos to tell you what niche to go to and honestly if the channel is big enough and they're releasing niches they aren't publishing in those niches themselves i can pretty much guarantee that and i, I do think it has a negative impact on the marketplace when people release niche videos and, and you'll notice now, and again, it's not a dig at other people, but you'll notice that channels are popping up that are just dedicated to talking about hot selling niches or a niche that can make you $3,947 per, per month. If they're such good niches, then you definitely you just wouldn't tell people, would you? Like you would just happily go about your way and making money and you wouldn't want the competition, but people don't care about the competition. I've released videos on certain niches and people have gone and flooded them. People will go and flood them if they think they're unsaturated, but they won't be. As soon as these niche videos come around, that opportunity for what should be a good niche 
has just become another niche, which makes it harder for everyone to compete in. Again, that's just my opinion, but if you're doing the niche research yourself, you will find these niches, okay? And you won't have to share them with anybody and you can reap the rewards of your efforts of doing niche research. So yeah, that's just my opinion on following niche videos. So moving on to the next section is publishing where you are clueless, okay? So this is another one, a big one, and it kind of relates back to niche videos as well. I've seen niche videos and uh, niche recommendations where people talk about, you know, these certain books that have got like, you know, X amount of traffic going to them that can make you $10,000 or this book's making $10,000 per month. And they're things that you have to have like, specialist knowledge in like these are things that you can't just create or have outsourced and if you and I, I know people that have tried doing this where they've seen like a niche video or a recommendation for a niche that's just something that you can't do unless you've had years of experience in that niche itself they go ahead and make these books and they get like one star reviews because they don't know what they're talking about again it still takes time to make a book that you don't have a clue what you're talking about with and to be honest I've tried it and it just you will get punished for it in terms of reviews and what happens when you start getting one star and two star reviews is that people just stop buying your book so it's important that you have some idea about the type of niche that you're publishing in trust me that it it will not work to try and be an expert at something you have no clue in and and the same goes for almost any book that you create so for example, I can give one of my books as an example here. I, I created a, a coloring book and I tried to target it toward a certain audience, a certain age group of children. And it was just, it got like, I think the first review that it got was a two star review because um, the, the review said something like, oh, it was too hard for my child, blah, 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 blah. I mean, I know that you know, maybe the child wasn't very smart, but <laughs> I think maybe it was me that just didn't have an understanding of that niche so I moved away from that and I went into a niche a coloring book niche that I did have did have an understanding of I knew what the people in that niche wanted and that's the book that now has like a 4.9 star uh, a rating review uh, rating so in my opinion it is really important that you know what you're talking about when it comes to the niche that you're publishing in so I'm not saying that you have to be the biggest expert ever if that was the case then none of us would be making any money but you need to have some understanding as to what your customer wants within that niche and trust me this is one of those things where customers will pick up on this so even if, imagine if you had a book that you'd worked quite hard on and for some reason it just took off but you didn't understand what people were really looking for in that niche and all that hard work has gone to waste because you've done a few things wrong and the customer ultimately isn't happy with it and end up leaving you a one or two star review and and one great way that I like to do this and lots of people do this and this has been recommended hundreds of times before in order to get an understanding of what your audience wants is to go through your competitions books and then go through the reviews and see what people like so go through all of them, the five star four star three star two star one star reviews go through as many as you can you know I'd recommend starting with the one star reviews to see what people didn't like um, and then make your way up to the five star reviews and just see what people are really looking for inside of those niches and even write it down is what I started doing going across as many different books um, especially when I was doing coloring books for, for for adults was to write down what all the complaints were all the pros were uh, what the things that people enjoyed inside those niches were write them all down and then start creating a book around that I know it sounds a bit wishy-washy and maybe not that important but trust me it is you want your books to stick in the marketplace for as long as possible and understanding what your audience wants is is key to keeping your book selling well and getting re good reviews um, as often as possible okay okay so moving on to the next big time waster here is buying pre-made interiors so Again, I can already fill the, the comment section here, but I, I know some people make money doing this. I know people make money from editing pre-made interiors, but it's never been a pursuit of mine. And the reason for that, and I've seen other people's books who have been doing this uh, in this way, buying pre-made interiors and using them, is that it promotes laziness. And the, the problem I think here is that we have such quick access to all this, um, digital media that like we can go into somewhere we can buy interiors we can shove it into a book create a cover and then within a day we've uploaded a, a coloring book or an activity book or whatever and it's too easy almost and 
like I say, it promotes this sort of idea that you can just keep cranking out book after book after book. And if you produce one in a day, you know, you can produce 30 in a month, for example. And you'll find that people doing this or what I found people doing this is that all of their books are low, low quality. They don't have any thought whatsoever into what the customer needs. They don't have any thought into the niche. They don't have any thought into whether they can run ads to the book properly to get ranked on the first page of Amazon. They just produce books because it's easy to do. And for me, that's the problem with buying pre-made interiors. It's just it's just waste of it's just laziness, and it, there is something that just feels strange to me and a bit risky about uploading images that so many other people are using in their books as well. Okay, so for me, I like to have a completely unique image, whether that's been from generated from a software or whether it's been hired from someone, um, whether I've hired someone to do that for me but certainly not buying pre-made interiors or even editing them slightly. I guess, you know, that's specific to interiors. I'm not talking about using fonts from Creative Fabrica or using design elements that you can sort of put inside your existing work. I'm talking about buying an image and yeah, I think they do like bundles and stuff like that. And then people just create the whole book out of these bundles. They don't change much. It's just laziness and it looks stupid as well. Okay, so let me just end this section by giving you a couple of suggestions of worthy pursuits for your publishing business. So the first one would be to learn something. And I'm being deadly serious here is to actually learn something. You know, I'm not talking about learning how to upload loads of low content books or how to find secret keywords and secret niches and things like that. I'm talking about learning how to design something. You know, what's the program that people use? Is it, is it Affinity Designer? or Photoshop and, and things like that. Like learn how to, to use those programs, buy one, use those programs and become good at creating book covers, become good at creating book interiors or learn about niches, learn about the niche that you're gonna be entering in, become the absolute master of that niche, know everything possible about that niche and then start publishing books in it instead. So instead of just blindly throwing up low content books and relying on niche videos and buying pre-made interiors because it's easy to do, do something that people aren't doing do something better than what people are doing and that involves learning something new and i promise you you'll have much more success if you do it do things this way and and do this in tandem with the other factors in this video and you're going to be on for a winning publishing business i can promise you that and the second thing is to invest money into your publishing business and again if you can't do these things like design and you don't want to design hire someone to do it like if you, this see these are the two options here you learn to do something or you pay someone else to do it who's better than you for me i can't stand designing i don't have the time to learn how to design i don't have the patience to design things so i hire people who know what they're doing and after that i take the time to learn about the niches that i'm going to be entering in okay because those things combined having a crazy book cover crazy interior and learning about what people in your niche actually want that's where selling your book happens like that's where the money comes from okay so it's not about uploading as many books as possible and buying pre-made interiors and finding niche videos it's not about that it's about being able to actually sell something to someone selling a high quality book to someone but what is the point in learning something or investing money into publishing business if you get your niche research wrong okay so that moves me on to the next section which is all about niche research okay so let's talk about whether niches are important or not so in my opinion yes i what i like to do my mentality with anything publishing related is that i want to go where there is buyer traffic okay so i understand that some people operate with well, with the attitude that they're only going to publish in areas where they have expertise and knowledge so that's great and that makes sense to do things that way but if your area of knowledge or your specialty in life comes from something like scuba diving and no one on amazon who searches amazon is interested in buying books about scuba diving then you're probably going to waste a lot of your time doing doing a passion project like that so for me i like to always go where i know that there's traffic going and we can do that by doing some pretty simple niche research okay but i do think there are areas on amazon types of books where you don't necessarily have to do niche research you can produce something that is a passion project and make sales with it so for example things like uh, a kids stories books kids story books i think are great passion projects if you if you love doing 
if you love writing stories for kids then I don't think you need to worry too much about what niche you're in and things like that but for the most part it, we're here to kind of make money and we want to go where we know that there is buyer traffic going okay so that moves me on to actually doing our niche research now this is one of those things I really highly recommend that you do yourself and stop watching niche videos because finding niches is easy so what I'm going to do in this section is show you exactly how I find these niches for free you can use paid software like helium 10 to help you find um, more like long tail keyword niches and whatnot but for the most part if if you're just looking for books that have traffic going to them that, that you can compete in you can just use amazon you can use it completely for free without any extensions i'm going to show you how to do that now okay so what we can do is we can come over to amazon and load up in incognito mode and i like to think of my niche research in a way kind of like a just a balloon in the sky like wherever it takes us it takes us okay we don't have any route um, nothing set in stone no particular criteria at the moment we just want to try and find niches that have got traffic going to them okay so what we can do is always have a starting point because you've got to start searching from somewhere so I like to try and uh, pick what I'm sort of going for out of the low medium and high content book on that day so if I was looking to start medium content book projects then I would just go and just type something like coloring book or activity book so for this one as you can see earlier, I was searching for activity books. So we're going to use that as our starting point. And all you need to do, get your notepad out or get your notepad up on the screen and start writing down niches that don't sound too generic. OK, so fun activity book, too generic, mazes and puzzles activity book, bit generic, fun and relaxing, a bit generic. You want to scroll through until you find something that just sounds a little bit different, a little bit more niche down. Uh, unicorns, I would avoid anything unicorn activity book related, for example. Uh, we're going to talk about how you can, how you decide if you can compete or not in the next section of this. So don't worry about that now. Just get niches written down. Um, then eventually when you do find something that stands out a little bit more, like these sections here, we have National Parks of the USA activity book and on the plane activity book. So the plane activity books is something I've not heard of before. I think it's a pretty good idea. It's a little bit more niche down. It's it's not, you know, it's not just a generic activity book for kids. So let's go ahead and click onto that. Now, already write that one down. Get it down on pay on paper. But from here, if you what we want to do at this stage of niche research is to get as many ideas down as possible okay so what I like to do from here is just come down to these next sections which we have customers who also search you can just scroll through these and take a look at what else uh, people have been searching for but the main ones are the customers who view this also viewed okay so you can use this to find more niches very 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 quickly okay so already found another one here travel activity book for kids and uh, you would write that down travel journal for kids you can write that one down airplane coloring activity books you can write that down and these are the type of niches that people are making videos on and it's it's cheap because it's so easy to do that you don't need anyone to tell you how to find these niches okay you can go on and find all of these and many many more yourself and those niches won't uh, become screwed up by people revealing them on their YouTube channels so just keep doing the same thing if you're interested in this travel activity book let's go over to that one uh, you can scroll through scroll down again come to the customers who viewed this also viewed section here then that moves us on to a kinder kindergarten activity book for example road trip journal for example here okay road trip activities you can keep scrolling through this and you can do this all day it's so easy to do just keep scrolling through them write as many down as possible and it might be a good idea to try the ones that you like the look of is to also start writing down the age groups that you see pop up frequently so travel activity books they're going to be uh, you know for kids targeted four to eight you want to write down those age groups as well for each sort of section so the airplane one for example we want to see uh, you know take a look at the other airplane activity books and see what ages people are targeting so four to eight again um, we could quickly check this one children six to twelve so write down all the age groups and then you can sort of decide later on which specific age group you want to target before having your book made okay but don't worry too much about that at the moment we're just finding niches okay so once we've you can write down hundreds of these you, you know, spent a day doing this you can have a million billion niches uh, ready to go but the next section 
is the important one, which is deciding if you can compete, okay? So there are certain niches where you won't have a chance of competing, you know, unicorn coloring book and stuff like that, unicorn activity book, uh, toddler coloring book, generic, uh, you know, broad niches. You're not gonna be able to compete and the chance of you being able to compete even when running ads to those books it's gonna cost you a lot of money in ad spend, okay? So what I like to do is once I've found something like a plain activity book, I'm gonna go ahead and search that again now. So from here, let's go ahead actually and change, just just niche down ever so slightly for kids, plain activity book for kids, okay? Ignore, I just tend to ignore the numbers at the top now. I know people are obsessed with these numbers, um, but just I just ignore them. But what I want to do here in terms of whether I can compete or not, is I want to see how fast the my niche that I'm going for, my exact niche, dies off, okay? So by that, I mean how many pages do I have to go through before the books become less relevant to that to that niche, if that makes sense. I'm, I'm not making 100% sense here. So what I want to see here is plain activity books for kids to start dying off the first couple pages, okay? And then I can use that as a factor as to whether I can compete or not, okay? So you're gonna see what I mean here. So we have, on the first few pages here, we have a plain activity book that's got geared toward kids. Um, we have a travel activity book geared toward kids, airplane, kids, plane, kids, airplane, kids, uh, travel, kids, airplane, kids. On the plain activity book for kids, Plain activity book for kids, maze. That book pops up everywhere. This one does, so whatever. Plain activity book, travel activity book, plain. Uh, let's go on to the next page here. Unicorn coloring book, really fun activity book, mazes. Fun activity book. Do you know what I'm saying though? Like, look how fast that specific niche is dying off the first couple of pages. Now, this is something I, people, I've never seen anyone else do things this way to confirm that a niche. Um, is something that you can enter, but just keep going through and see like, there's not many on the second page here, is there? There's not many plain activity books for kids on the second page, is there? So you can see what I say now, you can see what I mean. There's, there's one here at the bottom here, um, but it's died off pretty quickly, I would have said. And that's when I look at it and I go, can I now organically rank on the first two pages for this niche? And if the answer is yes, then I'm getting very interested in this niche. So plain activity book is something I'm getting interested in. Okay, but the way that I look at it is, do I do I need to run ads to get on the first page? Okay, this is important. Everything you do with your niche confirmation is about whether you can get onto the first page of Amazon. Okay, so I'm looking at plain activity books and I'm thinking I can maybe get onto the front page organically. Now, let's say that there were still plain activity books on page three here. Okay, uh, there might be a couple, but it doesn't seem to be no, that's an airplane thingy. Uh, it doesn't seem to be many plane activity books at all. But let's say that this page had a few of them on them as well. And it wasn't dying off as quickly as we'd like. I like to see it die off off the first page, basically. But let's say that it wasn't. What I like to do then, this is another factor that helps me decide whether I want to enter the niche or not, is I want to, dis I want to establish if I need to run ads to this book to get it onto the front page, okay? So anything up to like page five, if it's still, um, if, if there, let's say if there were still plain activity books on page five, for example, then I would say to myself, yes, if I enter this niche, it's competitive, but it's not so competitive that I can't run ads to it and get ranked on the first page, okay? So what I'm always looking at doing is seeing if I can rank organically on the front page for, on Amazon for the search term that I'm looking at. If not, then I'm looking at how hard is it gonna be to get my book onto the first page by using ads. So if you had something, let me explain this. If you had something like a toddler coloring book, which is so um, com incredibly competitive, if you look at this and you scroll through, you think this is these are all toddler coloring book, toddler coloring book, toddler coloring book, everywhere, 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 everywhere. page three. Um, we're going to have more toddler coloring books. Uh, in my first coloring book, toddler coloring book. You know, if you come to the point where toddler coloring book, toddler coloring book, uh, toddler. Yeah, there you go. All these first, my first toddler. There's loads of them. There's loads of toddler coloring books. Okay, it's too, it's too competitive. If you found that like up to like page five and six, we're all just chock a block with toddler coloring books. You'd have to look at it and say, 
is my book going to get ranked organically on the first page for Amazon if I enter this niche? No, you won't. It's, it's unlikely. And then you need to look at it in the sense that how much money are you going to have to spend to get something like a toddler cutting book ranked on the first page? It's going to cost you a fortune to get something like that, something so generic and something so competitive ranked on the first page. Okay, so hopefully this is making sense. But that's kind of medium content books like coloring books and activity books and even higher content books where the competition is less than low content books. So I know a lot of you are interested in making sales with low content books, but let's take a look at the reality here and let's let's start doing this same thing when it comes to niche confirmation, when it comes to low content books. And this is going to lead me back to the problem with generic low content books. So if you have something like a... Um, let's just say a unicorn journal, unicorn journal, you know, take a look at all these unicorn journals. Okay. So these are going to go on for page after page after page after page. Okay. So yeah, these are all unicorn journals here, as you can see, unicorn journals with slightly different colors covers on them. Okay. It's going to be incredibly hard if you make a unicorn journal, it's going to be incredibly hard for you to get ranked organically on page one, unless you run ads to your book now if if you don't have the money to spend on ads if you're going to go this pursuit of low content books what's the next thing that people tell you to do is to niche down isn't it so what happens then you go and you onto you're on amazon searches and you look for things like uh unicorn journal for girls you search for that and then you still find that it is chock block full of unicorn journals for girls so what do you do from there? You move on and you pick an age group, don't you? You go from seven to 12, for example. So we've gone from unicorn journal to unicorn journal for girls to unicorn journal for girls age seven to 12, okay? And this is the way that people end up having to compete is that they have to keep niching down because the, the you know, the sort of the, the general niche here of unicorn journal, you can just do a little bit of research to see it's completely saturated and competitive like these areas are literally you know they're huge people uploading these things every single day hundreds and hundreds of them all over the place so what we do is we start niching down don't we? we start niching down and down and down and down until we can compete so we get to the point where we have things like unicorn journal for girls ages 7 to 12 pink or something like that and then that's when we cut start creating our books don't we this is the way that we stand out and try and get onto the front page by niching down to the point where um, there's less competition, but there's going to be less competition, but there's also going to be hardly any traffic. So if you're going to go this area of trying to stand out um, with your niches in low content book areas, you're going to start niching down. You're going to do what lots of people do. You niche down, niche down, niche down, niche down. But think of it this way. You know, if there's more competition, you have to then go niche down, which means there's going to be less traffic which means there's going to be less sales. So what does that mean when you when you have less sales? You start creating more books. And this is where the, the low content volume thing comes in, is that you need to start creating hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of books to stand out in these kind of micro niches, okay? So this does work for people that want to sit there and start doing uh, lots and lots and lots of low content books, like 5,000, 6,000 low content books. I'm never going to do that. Like I have not enough time or energy to, to produce that many books and to do all the niche research for those type of books and create unique covers for, for those niches as well. But just bear in mind, the point of this is that if you're going to go the low content route, this is going to be the way that you're going to get ranked uh, organically and actually have people see you organically on Amazon. Okay. So I've rambled on in this section, but let's just try and sum this up very quickly. When it comes to doing your niche research, do it yourself. Okay. Take a look at how fast the niche that you're entering dies off at the first few pages. If it's not if it's not dying off after the first few pages, then you're going to have to look at either doing or either either niching down or running ads to your book. Okay, but bear in mind if you keep niching down, you keep on niching down and down and down and down, you're going to have to keep creating a lot of books to do that. Okay, so my opinion here, the best way to approach this is to look for niches that have got traffic going to them niche down a little bit and then see if you can get ranked organically on the first couple of pages or whether you can get ranked on the first page by running ads okay so in terms of niching down i like to kind of end up in the middle okay so if you do things too broad so as we saw i was looking for a toddler toddler 
coloring book. Now, again, you just need to do a few minutes of research to see that toddler coloring books are incredibly competitive, incredibly saturated. You can look at that and go, you know what? This is going to be extremely hard for me to compete in, okay? So for me, what I like to do is kind of niche down. It's going to be hard to describe, but I'm going to try and do an example. I'm going to say like three times from your top niche okay so let, let's say that your absolute broad niche is an activity book okay that's what you're interested in so the area that i like to try that sort of middle ground area of where that there's not crazy amounts of competition but it's not so niche down that there's no traffic going to it if that makes sense so activity book for me way too broad way too competitive you've got no chance of being found on the first page or getting to the first page when running ads so activity book too broad what i want to do from there is that i want a one more uh, like niche down from there okay so for example football activity book football activity book is like the second niching down of activity book okay so activity book was too competitive now football activity book is the next step from there now i still think that might be after doing some research that might be a little bit too competitive still so i like to go that third level of going for an age group okay so we have football activity book and then we have the age group of kids 6 to 12 for example so that's kind of like three or four niches down okay but i don't want to go any further than that i don't want to target a very specific audience that doesn't exist so things like unicorn coloring book for girls age four to eight who like colors pink and um, have blue shoes i don't know something really niche down and just stupid to the point where you will have to end up creating a thousand um, different books just to see some sales okay so hopefully that makes sense if you're having a hard time following this because i know that i ramble quite a lot and you want to see a separate video on uh, more so on this topic of uh, deciding whether you can compete and niching down or whether you should do it whether you shouldn't do it just leave a comment and I'll start creating videos more specifically about that okay okay so also just randomly now if you're still listening to this video you've probably been here for like an hour well done so I'll tell you what if you're one of the first five people to say free course in the, in the comments below then I'm going to send you a copy of my course for free okay because it means a lot to me that people stick around and listen to me ramble for you know what's going to be hours so just leave the words free course in the comments below and I'll get back to you we'll get in touch and I'll send you a free course but bear in mind it's only going to be for the first five people that do that okay so maybe check the comments to see if people have already claimed the courses or not okay Okay, so just to touch upon one more thing very quickly with the niche research confirmation and the niching down that I've just shown you in this video. So I don't want you to get too confused because there's going to be a lot more a lot more factors that I take into consideration when it comes to actually picking the niche, such as uh, how consistent the BSRs are if they're under a certain amount. Uh, I don't want you to worry too much about that. I will make a separate video on these things, but I don't want you to think that you have to go into this with the attitude that if you find uh, plain activity books, are selling so plain activity book I don't want you to think that you have to then from there go another section pick an age group or a different target audience like adults or kids or teens okay so plain activity a book on its own might be enough for you to get ranked on the first page but if it's something like and there might not be a so if we just go back to this plain activity but there might not be search traffic going to something more specific like plain activity book for kids four to eight okay there might not be enough search volume for that okay but with something like football activity books i showed earlier for kids nine to uh, six to twelve here as we can see people are actively searching that so these are just some other factors that need to be taken into consideration as to how much search volume the exact phrase that you have has got going to it so if you were to search for if your if your book title was plain activity book for kids book for kids ages four to eight and nobody's searching for those phrases then it's going to be a little bit pointless to target that so specifically okay so i will make separate videos on that and it does involve me using helium 10 but i'll try and do like a a free way of finding out what um specific keyword to go for for your book title etc etc okay so don't worry about that at the moment just try and find these niches where you can fit in okay Okay, so moving on to the next section completely here, which is going to be about creating your listing. Now, if you remember at the start of the video, I said there's only going to be one 
section within this section and that is the order of importance okay so in this video i'm not going to get into how you can create the title for your book the subtitle for your book and fill out the back end keywords and all those things because the purpose of this beginner's guide or video or whatever you want to call it is to show off the side of publishing that is extremely important that doesn't get uh, talked about enough okay so what i want you to think about when it comes to creating your listing again don't worry about the keywords and stuff like that i will do a separate video or you can watch one of the many videos about these topics uh, from someone else's channel but what i want you to really think about here is the order of importance so i'm going to go onto someone else's listing and this is not very classy of me i know but i'm just going to use someone else's listing that i know you can't compete with uh, let's just do this one here for example actually let's just go back here and do a little test here so what do you think the order of importance is when it comes to your listing so i have this absolutely set in stone when it comes to creating my book and when you put an order of importance to something you you end up making more effort where you need to be making more effort okay so for me when i'm scrolling through here the first thing that i notice is the book cover and it should 100 percent always be the book cover which is the primary focus of your when creating your listing okay and when it comes to i'm going to get into the book cover section in a minute but when it comes to your book cover you, you want it to stand out when people are you need to think how it's going to look when people are scrolling through this part of amazon that i'm on now when they search for something like an airplane activity book and they're scrolling through here which are the ones that people are going to click on okay what's the ones that stand out it's the ones that have book covers that stand out in the small thumbnail okay so people aren't going to go into it you know into a, into a book that's got really tiny text on it and go and read that they're going to be drawn to the ones that stand out the most in these thumbnails okay so order importance to me number one is your book cover again going to go into a different section about that in just a moment number two is the title of your book okay so again i'm not going to go into too much detail about this but i will give you the sort of template that i use when it comes to creating my titles and subtitles from there we take a look at the price and you don't don't overthink your price price competitively unless you have something much better to offer okay but the worst thing that i see people do is charging ridiculous amounts for books that they've made within a week and end up making no sales just because their price is too high when there are better books out there for a lower price okay so moving on from there what the customer might do is they'll click onto the listing and for me what i do when i'm looking at buying books on amazon is i click onto the front cover and see what it has to offer and this is why i like that they've put the um, samples of their interior on the front of the cover because you can see the quality and what's inside a little preview there and people this is so important like things like this because people's attention span is just it's just minute isn't it like people can you know people want to see everything within a few seconds and that should be your goal when it comes to creating your listings to get as much info as much excitement in front of your customer as soon as possible and from there you go ahead and you move on to well, this is the order that i go into is the description then after all those three factors the price the book cover and the the name of the book uh, sorry the the title for the book is to go ahead and read the description now i'm not wild about this description because it's just so short but again this is selling quite well and i don't think your description is the most important thing ever but still work on it still work on it like it's just as important as the other factors and then moving on from there i don't think this this person has a plus content but we're going to talk about a plus content in a bit as well if you have a book like a coloring book or an activity book get a plus content made okay so order of importance after you found a niche had it made etc etc focus massively on your book cover again section dedicated to book covers coming up book cover book cover book cover focus on that massively then take a look at your title then quickly work out what your pricing should be make a good description and also have a plus content made i would put the importance of the a plus content above the description but we're going to talk about a plus content a little bit later okay so let's move on to what i think is the biggest section in this video and one of the most important things when it comes to amazon kdp that we tend to overlook and that is actually being able to make your book sell okay so ultimately everything that we do here we have a customer at the end of it who is interested in buying a product that we've uploaded onto amazon that's the bare bones of it but people miss this completely and like i said in previous videos i think we get publishing in reverse where we we try and serve ourselves first before we think about people that are actually going to be buying our books so we look at all these quick ways to 
upload content onto onto Amazon, quick ways to find niches and quick ways to find keywords and quick ways to find interiors and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. But we lose track of what matters the most and that is what the person at the other end is is seeing, okay? So that's the most important thing in my opinion. And what I want to do in this section is talk about the different factors that can that can increase your chances of making sales okay so everything that we want to do with publishing and of course this is just my opinion but it's all of, it's what's worked for me and what makes sense everything that we do every little thing that we do with our book listing every little thing that we do with our our cover our descriptions and everything every small thing that we do when we do it better we increase our chances of making sales okay so these are the things that people miss out on completely and I promise you, if you take this approach, then you're going to increase your chances of making sales and you're going to stand out in a marketplace that is full of books that are very, very similar to one another. OK, so let's run through some of the ways that you can increase your chances of making sales with any book that you upload onto Amazon. So you've got your niche, you've done all those things, you've done your research for your niche, you've decided what type of book you're going to be going after. So from here, what we want to look at is do we need to add value to this book? OK. Because if we're in a market where things are typically very similar, then one of the most obvious ways that we can stand out is by adding value to our book. So that can come in forms or that can come in different forms. So what I'm going to do here is head over to Amazon, go back to the uh, let's do the, the the plain activity book niche and take a look at it. And we're going to look at what we can do to sort of add value to that. Okay, because if people are looking through you know, X amount of different plain activity books, they're going to pick the one possibly that is going to give them the most value. And you'd be surprised how easy it is to add value to a book. OK, OK, so let's take a look through some of these airplane activity books for kids. So if we could see that the typical the first thing that we can do is the most obvious thing, and that is to add more pages and more activities for such a book like this. OK, so if we went through and we saw that most airplane activity books um, yeah, they had around 30 pages, which I think a lot of them have between like 30 and 50 pages. You know, the one way to add value to that would be to obviously add more pages where it makes sense to do so. And just a quick disclosure, I'm not saying that airplane activity books is a good niche and that you should get into it. This is just an example. And what you have to think about is the person that's actually going to be receiving this book. So an activity book for kids is not necessarily well it's not going to be used by the person that's buying it which is the parent it's going to be given to the child and the value here comes from the parent giving their child something that they want so in terms of an activity book for example adding value in this case could be doing something like having a, a larger variety of activities inside of the book it could be a case of having a variety of difficulty levels inside the book when it comes to the activities that the child's going to complete. It could be a case of adding uh, something that has more interaction with the child. So if you don't have like a story based, so if you're doing like an, act, uh, an activity book for kids, you could position this in a way that you say, hey, we have like story based mazes, for example, inside of our book. And again, it's going to be adding value to your book. And I think the, the more ways that you can think of adding value to a book in your niche, the more chance you have of standing out. So I hope this is making sense. And this can come down to just the cover, uh, the, the book cover. So imagine what a parent is thinking when they're giving this book to their child as a gift or, or whatever. They want to give it them and they want to see them smile or laugh at the front cover or be excited to open it up and, and start doing the activities inside. So even a nicer book cover is adding value to your book the thing is with this whole adding value thing that i'm talking about what i want to try and get people away from doing is the bare minimum so you're not going to come into like an airplane activity book uh, for kids and just offer 20 pages or 30 pages because people have done that already and they want to find something that has and you want to you, you know increase your chances of standing out by offering something more and the more that you can offer where it makes sense without being stupid that the better your chance of making sales are so if you're interested in selling low content books, then I think we've spoken about this in the previous section where adding value sort of comes mainly from having a unique offering in terms of your book cover, because that's kind of what people buy low content books for. You find the niche, you niche down, you make a unique cover um, and then you know that's that's your sort of unique selling point, I guess. But within that, what you can do is to take a look at and you can do this for any type of niche whatsoever, and I highly recommend that you do it, is to take a look at things that people are complaining about. So one way that you can add value, especially to low content books, 
is to see what things people are complaining about. So for example, we have these stupid date night coupons and they're pretty popular during Valentine's and there's so many of them out there and a lot of them are really boring. They got really bad reviews like, um, well, 4.1 is not bad, but you know, some of the reviews aren't exactly great. Um, and if we just check, for example, on this one here, um, you know, you want to check out the, the bad reviews that, that customers are giving these books. So for example, there's nothing interesting here. Um, uh, some examples have a date at your local library, find really boring stuff. So if you were to enter into this niche, what I would do for this, I would have a completely unique book cover, something that's got like a funny saying on it, romantic saying on it. It's got to be relevant to the niche, obviously. Um, and then inside of that, I would make the the coupons, uh, the activities, or whatever it is, a little bit more exciting, and then present it as like, you know, this is the most exciting uh, date night coupon book there is, type of thing, you know, and make a big deal out of being different in that sense. Like it's it's way it's above and beyond all these other coupon books, man. Like you're gonna you're gonna have some great date nights if you buy this one, that type of thing. Okay, so I'm not gonna be doing it because I don't want to do low content books anymore, but. That's one way that you can add value to these type of books in the very, very low content niches, okay? So I, I know at this point, a lot of these things that I'm talking about might seem a little bit pointless, but the whole point of this video is that when you get these factors, when you focus on these factors that you might not have thought about before, once you start getting better at all of these factors that I talk about in this video, all these little things, when they add up, I promise you they make a huge difference to your chances of making sales. So when it comes to listing as listing aesthetics, this section here, some of it might seem a little bit, you know, why is he talking about that? That's not that important. But again, once it all adds up, it's going to make a difference to your chances of making sales. And that's why I think this is such an important section as well. So let's just go over a couple things when it comes to listing aesthetics. Now, obviously, we have a book cover, I've got a section coming up on that. So let's you know, let's just ignore that for now, but obviously the book cover is very, very important. But we're gonna be talking about things like making sure that, you know, the the on the book cover, the text is centered and things like that. And when it comes to creating your title and subtitle for your book, don't do it all in lower case. Make sure you do capital letters for the start of each words other than uh, words like of and for and, you know, the, you know, three letter words and things like that. All these things, when they add up, they make a huge difference to how your book looks to your customer, how your listing looks to your customer. And the same for your description. You don't want your description all clumped together. It looks messy. You want to put in like they've done here. They've got some bullet points. They've got some highlighted text here. And then, of course, if you have a good enough book with a good enough interior, you want to take a look at adding some A plus content. I've got a separate section for that in just a second. And the other thing when it comes to your listing aesthetic is your grammar. So I know that some of us aren't obviously going to be native English speakers, but you are selling to an audience that are going to be primarily native English speakers. OK, so if your grammar is not good or if you're if you don't, if English isn't your first language, you still need to get this right. OK, because as an as a person that shops on Amazon, I can tell you this and I promise you this is the case. If you come onto a listing, if I come onto a listing and I see that there's a grammar error on the front cover or in the, the title or in the description, I'm clicking off of that because I associate bad grammar with a with a poor quality product. OK, so if English is not your first language or if your English is pretty bad, then you need to do whatever you can to make sure that it's good. I can't really give many suggestions other than you go to Upwork and say to someone, hey, can you translate you know, a few of my listings and pay them a couple dollars, which a lot of people will do. So it's going to be worth it in the long run, especially if you have a project that you've worked hard on for so long, the cover, the interior, you spent money on it. Don't screw it up by having a really low quality looking listing in terms of the aesthetics. OK, so make sure you get those things right grammar being the most important one okay okay so next we have your a plus content so if you don't know what a plus content is it's these kind of infographics that you can design and put into your amazon listing so this was only a feature that was added a few months ago six months ago someone can probably correct me on that um, but it allows you to do things like this here on screen where you can show off your book cover you can show off the interiors um, and it, it's kind of it, it adds it's like a, a separate sales page at this point okay so you want to utilize this where it makes sense now I, if you're spamming Amazon with low content books and you don't have anything 
better or something good to offer to Amazon's customers, then I would say don't bother doing A plus content. But if you're going for these sort of slightly higher content niches, activity books and anything above like you just tip your typical low content book, then definitely look at having A plus content made. And I would say if you are doing low content books, but if you're doing them in a way where your interior offers something much, much better and much more unique that you've put a lot of work into, definitely use A plus content as well. Okay. But I'm going to be having a separate video about A plus content because it's going to make this video incredibly long if I talk about it all in this video here. Okay. Okay. So the next section that I had within the making a book sell section was standing out with your eight, with your low content books. Now I've actually already done that. I've already explained that in the section where I talk about the type of books that I sell. So if you need to go back, if you've missed that, you want to go and see that it's going to be toward the start of the video, but let's move on to the next section in this section, which is when you don't need to be better. Okay. Because like I said before, you don't necessarily have to be the best in your niche. You don't necessarily have to add more value to your book to make sales. Okay. So the obvious scenario here, when it comes to not needing to be better or be the best in your niche is when you have, when you find a very, very low competition niche. Okay. So let's imagine that slug coloring books were a good niche and they had hardly had any books on Amazon for sale then in this scenario, like you don't necessarily have to think out of your way in terms of like, what can I add in terms of value? How can I be better than everyone else? Because you don't need to be, you can just upload a good book, a good cover, and you can see sales that way. So the other scenario here where you don't need to make your book better is when you're selling in a niche where the customer is likely to come back and buy a different version of that book. So for example, things like coloring books and activity books. Now, obviously I've spoken about adding value though to those books to increase your chances of making sales. But if you're in a niche where you can comfortably get onto the first page or the second page of Amazon, then in my opinion, I have a couple of these books myself where they're not necessarily better than anyone else's, but I know the fact that if I get onto the first page that I will still make sales in those niches. Okay. So the other scenario here is if you cannot think of any way whatsoever to stand out in your niche or add value to your niche. So let's say that a London coloring book was a niche that you're interested in getting into. Uh, it's got good traffic going to it. It's got some competition there, but you don't know how to add value to that book. You just don't know what to do in this scenario. I would look at how easy it is for you to rank. So going back to the ranking thing is, is it with this niche, can you get onto the front page? Can you get onto the second page? If you're on the third page or fourth page, can you get onto the front page by running ads to your book? So if the answer is yes, if you can do that and get your book onto the first page, if you think you can before you start your project, but you don't know how to add value to that book, you don't necessarily have to be better in my opinion, because these are the type of books where a customer will buy one. If they enjoy it, they'll come back to Amazon, they'll buy a different one and try that one. But what you don't want to do in this scenario is to offer below the bare minimum. Okay. So you want to set that standard, see what the standard is that the customer expects and then shoot for that at the very least. Okay. So for example, if we could see that all these London adult coloring books had 30 pages or more, we don't want to go below 30 pages. Okay. So we want to be at least on par with, with what the competition is offering. Okay. Okay, so like I say, there are some scenarios where you don't need to be better or add value to your book, but I would always recommend like, you know, stress your brain, strain your brain and try and think of ways to add value to your book, no matter what the scenario, even if the competition is low, always think of a way to add value to your book still. Okay. Okay. So let's move on to the next section here, which is reviews. Now reviews in terms of making your book sell are obviously important, but I have nothing to say here actually in terms of reviews other than create a good book and let it sell because from my experience, I, I've tried, you know, thinking up ways where I can get reviews from friends and family and, and things like this, but it doesn't matter because everything that I, I want to do with publishing, it revolves around long term results. Okay. So if you create a good book, you run ads to this book, you're going to get views on it. And if people like what they see, if it serves a purpose for them, they're going to buy the book regardless of the reviews. Now, when you do this, when you create a good book that people want, you add the value, have an insane book cover, you run ads to it. When you do all these things, make your listing look nice, etc. everything we've spoken about in this video, 
when you do all these things, you don't have to worry about reviews, okay? My best-selling coloring book, zero reviews. I did absolutely nothing with it. Now it's sat on 4.8 or 9, 4.8 or 9 with about 60 reviews on it, okay? And they came in because people liked the book, okay? So the better the book, the higher the chance and the faster you'll get those five-star and four-star reviews, okay? So I know it's not what you want to hear, but I would just focus entirely on making a great book because even if you do find a way to get like quick reviews i don't know what people do they like do review swaps and other dodgy stuff like that eventually you'll get found out over time if it's a poor quality book it will tank your book's ranking and eventually it'll just vanish off of amazon you want every book that you create to have a chance at sticking on amazon's first page and making you sales for a long time and it just comes down to creating a book a great book that people want okay so reviews i would just get it out of your head for now just don't worry about that and that's going to lead me on to my next section here in this section which is always trying to make your next book better so this is like a, a mindset type of thing that you have to be realistic you're not going to create if you're new to amazon or if you're a few months into it uh, into amazon kdp this is a mindset thing you need to understand that your first few books aren't going to be particularly good okay but if you go into it with the attitude that you need to make your next book five percent better or ten percent better than the last book that you made and do everything you can to make it that five or ten percent better whether it's making a better book cover or targeting your niche better or running ads better do everything you can to make your your book your next book better than the last one and i promise you you will see better long-term results when you implement this mindset and this should go without saying like everything you do you want to get better at right but people don't they're happy to stick with the bare minimum which doesn't work which is low content books and happy to just to keep churning out the same things the same low quality over and over and over and over and over never striving to go to another level and create something better and better and better and I've seen some people's progression who message me on Facebook and some people get it right within like a month some people know that what they're doing originally isn't good enough they can look back at it and go you know what that wasn't great but i'm working on you know creating better books better interiors etc 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 and for some people that standard like it clicks very soon but for other people it doesn't it takes a long time but it doesn't matter like as long as you know as long as you go into it with the attitude that you want to get better with every single book that you produce then eventually you'll start producing good books and good books are what sell on amazon Okay, so let's move on to the next section completely here, which is talking about the importance of your book cover. So you may have noticed throughout this video that I've kind of tried to hit home how important your book cover is because I believe it is. I believe it's just so important. And please don't miss this section. Don't think you can just upload any book cover onto Amazon and start seeing sales because it is just so important. Okay, so one, one of the most important things here is being able to understand your customer's standards and then alongside that, being able to understand your own ability when it comes to creating a book cover. OK, so these two factors are extremely important because they're going to be the difference between you making sales and not making sales. And once you understand these factors, you'll then know whether you need to whether you can design this yourself, design your book cover yourself or whether you need to outsource it to someone that knows what they're doing. OK, so one of the worst things that I see people do is that they find a niche that's fine they've got a good niche that's got traffic going to it they can compete whatever they run ads to it they have a nice book interior made they make it you know I don't know how people make book interiors these days outsourcing is what I suggest they have the interior made and then they produce a terrible book cover they try and do the book cover themselves because they've seen people creating book covers in Canva and yes some people can create really good book covers in Canva I've seen it but the problem is that people, they don't understand their own ability. And that's the most frustrating thing. And it ruins your chances of making sales. So if they were trying to do a book like this here, uh, you know, a sort of swear word coloring book, for example, and they wanted to they wanted to sell in this niche as well. So they create the book, they, they find a niche, create the book, and then they make the cover in Canva. And what they do is they end up spending a day creating a book cover for a book that they want to make sales in and end up with something like this. Now, you could look at that and you could go, well, you know, the 
the, the font is quite nice and it sort of stands out but it's terrible like people make these type of books and I've seen it because over the course of the last year maybe 50 plus people have shown me their book covers and 95% of them suck terribly because we're being told that we can make book covers very simply and uh, quickly in Canva which you can do some people can do it I know that you watching this now you can probably do it yourself yes but for most of us we're going to end up with something that doesn't look great now what you really need to do is take a look at a book cover like this here this is brilliant the book cover it is absolutely fantastic you cannot produce this on Canva. I don't care what you say. You cannot produce this on Canva. Uh, if you can, I'm going to hire you, okay? Yeah, get in touch with me if you can do this. I'm going to hire you to do my book covers. And this is what I mean by understanding standards and understanding your own ability because you, you have to be real with yourself. You really have to be real with yourself. I've had people message me saying that they think their covers are incredibly good. And I'm like, man, it's it's one of the worst book covers I've ever seen. And I, I'm right. I know I'm right. I know I'm right as well. And this is something you have to be real with with yourself. And again, it comes down to getting better with each book that you produce. You you know, you might start off with a, a terrible looking book cover like this, and then you might eventually make your way up to being able to design something like this or having enough money to hire someone who can do a book cover like this. OK, so this is the importance of standards. And if you cannot get close so what you can do is come over to Amazon when you're thinking about creating a book in a certain niche. Take a look at the best selling books in that niche. Take a look at their book covers and see how they look and then go back to yours and look at yours and then go get your family to come in and then go post it online or something and get honest feedback from people. I promise you this is the most uh, important lesson that you're probably going to learn in this video and it's probably going to hurt you quite badly when people tell you when people are actually honest about your book covers and they tell you that they suck which they probably do but it's going to be extremely beneficial when it when it comes to you going forward with the publishing business okay so again just go look at what other publishers are doing and then ask yourself is your book close to that standard if it's nowhere near being close then don't bother or spend more time until it is close okay Okay, so moving on to the next section within this section, which is being in theme with your niche. So this is talking about book covers still. So I talk about this quite a lot in a lot of my videos, and I think it is important when it comes to increasing your chances of making sales. And by being in theme, I think some people have misinterpreted me here as just copying what other people are doing with their books. So for example, if we have a, if we're looking at having an animal coloring book created, for, for kids for example and we we find a book cover that we like what I'm saying when it comes to creating our book cover is not to copy them we don't want to ever copy people's work because that's ridiculous but we want to take inspiration from them we want to take design elements and, and colors and styles from other people's books that are selling well because if something is selling well on Amazon then why wouldn't you want to, you know to take inspiration from that and implement it into your designs so that they can your book can sell well as well so this is important when it comes to outsourcing stuff especially because your designer isn't going to care about you know what colors or what fonts particularly that you're going to see or how much space your words take up on the page they're not going to care about that they're just going to produce something and they're going to send it to you so if you're outsourcing your book covers, it's important that you communicate with the person that's designing your book because you need to tell them these things that you want to have. Don't assume that they're an expert for at selling on Amazon because they would be selling books on Amazon if they were. So you need to tell them what you want on your book cover and you need to be in theme with people in your niche, with books in your niche. So what you can do here to get in theme with your niche and start getting some inspiration for your book cover is to go and see what other people are doing with their listings, okay? Other books that are selling quite well. So what you want, you probably want to have your BSR, um, your DS Amazon Quick View. I don't have it installed on this computer at the moment, but it's the extension that lets you see uh, the, the book rankings. I would have that on there just so you can see which books are selling well and try and take inspiration from those books, okay? So for example, if it was the cursive handwriting workbooks for kids niche that we're interested in entering, we want to go through them, look at the books that are selling well, and then take design elements from there. So for example, like we could maybe see from this that the, the cursive handwriting niche, for example, um, a lot of books 
they will have example uh, samples of the pages on the front cover. So they have a sample here. Um, we have samples here. We have samples here. Samples here. Samples here. Okay, samples here. All the good selling books have a sample of uh, the cursive uh, handwriting page on the front cover. Okay, so what else can we take from this? A lot of these are sort of what colors do we have here? We have blue. We have white. And you know, blue again up here, and I think blue is quite a, a friendly color when it comes to kids' books. So maybe you might want your book to be blue. Again, just doing this kind of really quickly here. So you'd want to see, you want to get inspiration from the books that are selling well. That's why I recommend the BSR um, extension thing, so you can see which ones just from searching through the pages here. But then take a look at the type of um, font that people are using on their books. Like, is there sort of a common theme of the fonts that people are using? Are they using animals? to um to liven up their covers for example are they putting the benefits on here like the alphabet the words the sentences are they doing things like that and yeah as i can see from just from looking at this here like they will use the animal in this one here they use the animal in this one and i think animals are quite a, a friendly way of portraying books like this so again you could have animals on your book cover for example so that's what i mean about being in theme with what's already working. But within that, of course, you need to create something unique still. So for example, if it was, you know, like I can see there's lots of animals here, like that seemed to be a, a you know, a real recurring theme here, there's the animals and animals holding up the, the sample sheets here. So you could take something, you could take an animal that you know that kids love, and I would, I would have used sloth, but I can see that someone's done it already, but I'd have the animal holding up a sample page of uh, one of the pages inside the book and that's the way that you can take what's working but also be different at the same time okay and what I like to do when it comes to having my book cover made is I like to just write down everything that stands out so the type of like I say the type of font that's being used the colors design elements etc etc write them all down and then when it comes to outsourcing the book or creating the book uh, you know I outsource my stuff so I, I send that list to the the outsourcer yeah, the designer sorry and I tell them this is exactly what I want the book to look like and even give them some samples of what I like the look of as well and also just a quick note when it comes to outsourcing your book cover if you're not happy with something get them to do it better like honestly like if you watch my case study from the the hand drawn May software uh, the bonus that I give away with that where I talk about the the book that I was going to upload onto Amazon I showed off the book cover that I had made so the first version of the book cover I had up on the screen and then after chatting with the the designer we then came back with a much better looking book cover because I told them what I wanted I was like you know what this the green on this page isn't green enough I want it darker have a darker green or put more elements in here put this that and this that blah 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 and eventually we had a, a really nice looking book cover uh, come out of it. Okay, so that's the importance of your book cover. Get it right. Always, always strive again to try and make your, your next book cover better than the last one, whether you're making it yourself or whether you're outsourcing it. Always try make that book cover better. I promise you, you will see more sales doing things this way. And of course, above everything, be real with yourself. Understand that your book cover probably isn't good at all. Just be real, take a look at what is selling on Amazon and then go from there. Okay, so moving toward the end of this video now, I get a lot of questions uh, about what type of software that I use and what type of software that I recommend and websites that I recommend to use in your publishing business. So th this could be an opportunity for me to say, you know what, go ahead and use everything and I'll take an affiliate commission for, you know, like 50 different um, websites and softwares. But I, I don't, I'm not like that. I do have some that I use that I'm affiliated with and I absolutely love the ones that I use. Anything that I affiliate myself with, I truly believe in. I think it's extremely high quality and I will recommend uh, to, to every person on my channel. Basically, I have no problem doing that. So the first one is the activity book software that I use, which is the hand drawn mazes, as you can see on here. There's nothing else like it. It is the best at what it does and to be honest it's it is very addictive to create mazes from and you can create some very unique and interesting books for uh, unique uh, pages for your activity books for example and there's just tons of features in here way too much for me to talk about i've got reviews on this on my channel somewhere i'll probably you can either search it on my channel or go to the description but if, if you decide to buy this software you also get my case study 
with this okay so this the case study is a full-blown case study of a book that i was going to upload onto amazon so it goes through everything the the way that i've picked the niche the book cover how i had the book cover made etc etc how i plan on having runs to it it's a full-blown case study to show you exactly the type of book this type of standard and quality that i go for when it comes to uploading something onto amazon the way that i do things showing that off and it's uh it's helping a lot of people already. So in terms of activity book software, the other one that I use is by the same company that makes the hand drawn mazes. And that's one that helps you to create word searches. So if you're doing word searches and things like if you want to have word searches made, you cannot have that outsourced. Um, so I would definitely recommend using that software if you're interested in that. I'm gonna leave them all linked in the description for you to check out. But what I will say, you know, this is not a, a plug, well it is a plug for this software obviously, but you got to be realistic if you're thinking about buying software to supplement your publishing business, okay? For example, if you want to buy the hand drawn maze software on screen here, don't use it to just spam Amazon with hand drawn mazes, okay? Because there's not a big enough market for just hand drawn mazes, okay? So this is here, you buy it one time, you can have this for the rest of your life, but you want to be using it in activity books, okay? You want to be using it in bigger projects, okay? And the same goes for word searches. Whilst you can sell word searches on their own, for example, and you can make them quite quickly and easily with the software, I'd still recommend that you try and implement these into bigger projects as well, okay? And like I said, these are here to, to supplement your publishing business and help you out. They're not here as a way to just quickly make money, okay? You don't need this, you don't need any software, but you need to take a look at whether it gives you motivation, whether it inspires you to create something new and brilliant, or whether it just fits into your publishing plans and makes life much easier for you, okay? Okay, so the next one that I use quite a lot is Helium 10. Now, I've obviously spoken about Helium 10 before on my channel. I love Helium 10, it is expensive. I would only recommend that you pick up Helium 10 if you have the money to do so if you've already started making money from publishing then helium 10 is a great one to take your publishing to the next level again if you're new to publishing or you don't have any money to put into publishing do not get the software do not get helium 10 don't put all your money into crazy software hoping it's going to be a game changer because it won't be it's here to supplement your your publishing business it's here to take you to that next level but only do it obviously when you can afford to do so okay so helium 10 is fantastic I use it for my uh, to confirm that niches have traffic going to them, keywords have traffic going to them. I use it when it comes to creating my ad campaigns. It's fantastic. I use it all the time. And if you decide to pick up Helium 10, you'll also get access to my private Facebook group, which has like 15 videos in it, where which are made by me, by me and how I use it for my publishing business. And, and they're going to show you how to use Helium 10 specifically for publishing okay so if you do decide to get helium 10 you want access to the private facebook group you must 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 send me an email okay or you must message me on facebook saying that you've bought helium 10 through me because it's not an automated thing it doesn't just happen you have to get in touch with me somehow okay i'd recommend facebook search for chris radog and message me there okay okay so the next service that i recommend is creative fabrica now this is the one that i highly highly recommend if you're just starting off with publishing and you want to start with a low budget you can do everything without spending any money with your publishing business yes but if you really want to kick start your success with publishing especially if you're doing low content books i can highly highly recommend creative fabrica because the first month i think is a dollar and then after that i think the the subscription is relatively low but the thing is with creative fabrica is that you can drastically increase the quality of your book cover just through virtue of the font section okay so if you're creating low content books then a big portion of your book cover is going to be the font and if you look through creative fabrica here you'll see that we have i think it's yeah 89,000 different fonts which you have access to and the, the possibilities here for targeting the niche that you're going to be entering are pretty pretty insane actually because you'll be able to find a font that really works in theme with the niche that you're going for 
Okay, so the next reason that I, I really like Creative Fabrica, especially if you're, if you're starting out, is because I spoke about the importance of creating nice looking A plus content to increase the appeal of your listing aesthetic. So what you can do with Creative Fabrica is they have these kind of mock-ups here. So what, you, what you'd be able to do ultimately is to take these mock-ups, put your interior or your front cover onto it, and then put that onto your listing through your A plus content. And that's gonna make a big difference to how people perceive your listing in terms of quality when they see that you have a, a book mock-up in there. So you can scroll through Creative Fabrica, find the ones that you like. We have some pretty cool ones here, for example. So, you know, if you were doing a coloring book, for example, you could download this one here and use that as your A plus content. We have a, a quite a nice looking mock-up here and you can do the interior as well. And I just think it looks great. It really adds something to your listing. And, you know, your first month for a dollar is, it's a big deal that like it's going to make a huge difference to your chances of making sales on KDP. And I think the only section on Creative Fabrica that I don't recommend is the KDP interiors section. So I spoke about earlier about creating, about buying pre-made interiors. I just would not use this section, okay? Like I love Creative Fabrica. I'm going to be using it, but I just, I, I would stay away from the KDP interiors section. That's just my opinion. I don't want to get into that into too much detail. Um, but one of the, what you can do, if you are having interiors made or if you're making the interiors yourself, you can use Creative Fabrica to kind of spice up the interior, okay? So you can search Creative Fabrica for for some elements. So if you had something like a, a word search and you wanted to have, and it was based around animals or something, and you wanted to have some cats around, the word search or around the font or whatever, you can check out Creative Fabrica to see what they have and you can add these elements in there, but I just wouldn't ever have anything that is like the main element on screen and just trying to sell that as it is, okay? So that's why I avoid the, the KDP interior section, okay? So that's Creative Fabrica, $1 for your first month. It's gonna be all linked in the description. Just go and check that out and sign up there. Okay, so the next two pieces of software that I recommend are free and they're just extensions for Chrome. I've spoken about them a million billion times. Uh, unfortunately, I don't have them on this computer at the moment, but the first one is DS Amazon Quick View. That's the one that lets you see the BSR ranking on the screen, so you don't have to go into each book to see the BSR. It's all gonna be shown on the screen here. So that's DS Amazon Quick View. Definitely, definitely get that. The other one is and the other one here is AMZ Suggestion Expander. Okay, so again, I don't have it on this computer, but what it is, is another Chrome extension, and it's just gonna give you more suggestions when you start typing things into Amazon. Okay, so once you start typing into Amazon, you get Amazon's um, searches here, but what the AMZ Suggestion Expander does is to give you more of them, basically, as you can see here. So you typically, you just get the white section that Amazon suggests, but then we get the before, and the after keywords as well, and all these other ones that go with it. So that's just a good one when it comes to finding, uh, trying to find new niches or finding keywords for your ad campaigns and things like that. Okay, so definitely, definitely check that out. I think the the um, self publishing titans uh, guys have one similar as well. So if if you don't like this one, you could try the self publishing titan one as well. Okay, last but not least, we have your brain slash common sense. So all this software is good, it's helpful, it's fantastic, it can increase your sales, make your books look great, but nothing is gonna work unless you have some common sense and understanding of Amazon's marketplace and what your customers want. And that's been the point of this, this video. The whole point of this video is to help you sell books to people, and that relies on you and your brain. A software isn't gonna do this for you. Yes, it can help you make your books look better, it can help you find better keywords, but ultimately it's going to be down to you and your thought processes. And hopefully this video is, has made sense of that for you. And I really hope this video gives you a solid path and a solid direction that you can go forward with with your publishing business, okay? Okay, so as promised, I have one more section here to cover very quickly, and that is running ads to your books. So I have a free course when it comes to running ads, and I highly recommend that you go and check that out. It's free. It's in the description below. Yeah, click the link, put your email address in, and then you're gonna get sent a link to watch the, the free course. It's it's broken up into different sections, so it's not gonna be as tedious as this video, um, but I promise you it's gonna help you. A, a lot of, I got a lot of good feedback on this free ads course, and it's gonna clear a lot of things up for you when it comes to running ads. You're gonna enjoy it, go get it. All you need to do is put your email address in. And I think 
that's it for this video. Like I think I've covered everything that I wanted to talk about in terms of my publishing mentality. I know that this isn't a typical beginner's video where I show you how to sign up for an account and and where to buy niche lists and, and things like that. But this is important. I promise you this is way more important. These are the things that people are not telling you. These are the things that make you sales on Amazon. And I, I honestly, I really hope you've enjoyed this video. And it means the world to me that if you've watched over two hours of this or however long it is, thank you so much for taking this the time to, to listen to me ramble on and on. It means so much to me. And I wanted to, to create this to give back to people that follow my channel. And I, I think I upset a few people with my last video, which was really clickbaity and really sarcastic. So I apologize if you watched that and you're upset by it. Consider this a peace offering. This is everything. I put everything into this video and I really hope you've enjoyed it. So we, yeah, we've gone over everything here. We talk about the expectations and publishing reality, the type of books that we can publish, what type of books I'm selling, the best ways to waste time with KDP. We've done the niche research stuff. We've done the, the listings. Uh, we've done about... We looked at how to actually make a book sale. We've done about the importance of your book cover. We've seen the software that I've been using. And of course, you have the free ads course that you can take from here, okay? So that's it. If you like this approach to publishing, if you haven't subscribed to my channel and you, you like the idea of a transparent and realistic approach to publishing, then I'd love for you to subscribe or pass this on to a friend who might be interested in this video. And yeah, congratulations. If you watched all of this, you're amazing. I love you. And I'll see you in another video very soon.